Hello, Crusader Kings fans from around the globe. My name is the Ottawa Welshman, and you might know me from YouTube. Today, I've partnered up with Paradox Interactive to make the most succinct guide ever on getting started with Crusader Kings 3. So you open the game, and you're probably super confused. Naturally, you'll have all kinds of questions, such as what do all these buttons do? Or why does Charles the Bald have hair? But don't worry, in five minutes, all your questions will be answered and you'll be ready to start amassing wealth and power. So first things first, the most important tip you will ever get, tool tips. CK3 is an incredibly complex game, but the best part about it is at any given time, you can learn about any complex mechanic through these tool tips. If the word is highlighted in blue, it means you can hover over it for more info. The biggest pro maneuver I would recommend is turning on this setting. This is gonna help you a ton for deep diving. So next, let's start by covering the basics. I'm gonna start as this ruler right here. Now, if we click on the holding, you can see our character pops up with these stats. Now obviously, having a higher number in the stat is always better. These skills represent diplomacy, which is your ability to interact with others and their opinion of you. Your martial, the ability to raise and command armies. Stewardship, the ability to manage your lands and realm. Intrigue, your ability to scheme and find secrets. And finally, learning, your ability to study technology and theology. You also have these lifestyle traits. Not only do they modify your stats, but they also describe how your character will act and what decisions they'll make. There are dozens of traits to choose from. Over here, we have your currencies and resources. Now, these are really important, and I'm going to go through the most important one. The first is obviously gold. Now, this is gained from taxes, whether they be on buildings you directly hold or your vassals paying you monthly. Gold is primarily spent on three things, creating and maintaining an army, buying buildings in your holdings to bring you in more tax, and bribing people to get what you want. The next currency is prestige. You can earn it in so many ways, by holding titles, hosting exotic feasts, marrying into respected dynasties, and more. Your amount of prestige indicates your level of fame, which will impact how other characters view you. Subsequently, prestige is important because you can spend it on declaring wars against your neighbor. And finally, we have piety. This is earned through having virtuous traits and going on pilgrimages. It indicates your level of devotion and how other people view you. It can be spent on declaring holy wars against your neighbor, divorcing your spouse you no longer fancy, or reforming your religion to make it however you like. Now I know you're thinking, Ottawa, I'm playing a map-based game here, can you please talk about the map? And having spent literally thousands of hours staring at it personally, I would love nothing more. Titles on this map are organized in a pyramid-like structure, so let's work our way up this bad boy. At the bottom level, we have a barony holding. This is like a castle in your lands. Keep in mind, you're limited to the number of castles you can hold indicated by the number on the top right here. Moving up the pyramid, you have counties. Now, counties can have multiple baronies inside them. If you war your neighbors enough, you might be able to amass enough counties to form a duchy. Multiple counties forms a duchy. Multiple duchies form a kingdom. And you guessed it, multiple kingdoms forms an empire. See, you're catching on pretty quick. You'll be a fine ruler in no time. Now, obviously, there are hundreds of holdings in an empire. So when you start to surpass the amount you can hold, you'll grant these titles away to vassals of yours. You can find more information on vassals right here. Now, let's focus back on our ruler for a second. He looks a bit lonely. So I think we should find him a wife. You can interact with any character by right clicking them and looking at the options. I'm going to filter for one with good inheritable traits. Perfect. Now it looks like his son is currently his player heir, meaning he will inherit all of his titles and will continue playing as that character after we die. You can find more information on your heirs and succession right here. Next we're moving on to wars, which are fought by armies. You can find more information about your armies here. They're made up of levies, which are cheaper, less effective units, men-at-arms, which are more expensive elite soldiers, and knights, which are the top tier fighters in your army. Later in the game, you'll also discover the ability to hire mercenaries or holy orders to fight your wars. Now, running a realm is tough work. That's why you need a council of trusted advisors, one to help you with each of the five stats. The most important one you're going to want to know for your first playthrough ever is right here. Fabricate claim from your bishop. In order to declare wars against your neighbors, you need a cause, a reason. And oh boy, by putting your bishop on fabricate claims on territories, you can make one. So once you have a claim on your neighbor, you can go ahead and declare war on them by right clicking on the character. Next up, you'll want to raise your armies from a rally point. Note, your expenses are going to go up when your armies are raised, so be careful about not making your army too big if you can't afford it. 
Next, you'll want to march your armies right into neighboring territory and begin to siege down the enemy castle. Now, this little icon down here denotes your war score. You get war score from winning battles, taking prisoners, and holding the war target. If you hit minus 100% war score, that means your enemy can enforce their demands on you and you lose. But if you hit 100% war score, well, oh baby, that means we're in the money. So we can enforce the demands on our enemy and take hold of their tasty, tasty holdings. And that's it. That's everything you need to know to have your first successful Crusader Kings 3 playthrough. On behalf of Paradox Interactive and Crusader Kings 3, I'm the Ottawa Welshman, wishing you the best of luck. And always remember, real strategy takes cunning.